Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at operating cash flows. So it's the sequel to what the statement of cash flows uh, presentation I did before. So as I said, we're going to understand operating cash flows in more detail. We're going to understand the indirect method of preparing a cash flow. And this is where you have to reconcile the profit before tax to cash generated from operations. Um, once you have the cash generated from operations, that's the hard bit. You take away interest payments and you take away corporation tax payments and that gives you the net cash generated from operations. Okay, so let's have an overview of the process. So we have our profit before tax which is prepared under the accruals basis and it sort of needs to be sorted out. We adjust for any non-cash flow items included within profits. We'll cover what those are. We adjust for movements in current assets and current liabilities and we'll explain why that is. And that gives us the cash generated from operations. Once we have that, we take away interest payments and corporation tax payments. And finally, that gives us the net cash from operations. Okay, so there are only six steps to actually learn. Now, let's have a think about why that is. So profit before tax I have here for a company is 3.3 million. And we've take, done lots of calculations to arrive at this figure. Is that the same as the cash generated from operations? Well, let's have a think about it. No, because investment income, that's, to do, that's not to do with operations. That's an investing movement. Finance costs aren't directly related to operations, and they also might be a non-cash flow as well. Okay, so what do we do? We have to adjust for them. So we've taken away finance costs and added investment income to get to profit before tax. So we have to do the opposite to what, get rid of them. We have to add back the finance costs because we've taken them away. We have to take away investment income. And in this example, it works out pretty well because we've got profit from operations. Okay. Now, my next question is, is profit from operations going to be the same as the cash generated from operations? What the net cash generated? Well, let's have a think. No, because admin expenses includes non-cash flow items like depreciation and amortization. We've actually subtracted those to add, give us the profit before tax. We need to add them back. So, so far, we've added back finance costs. We've taken away investment income. And the next step has been to add back depreciation and amortization. What's another issue? Well, let's have a think about it. So revenue, is that telling you how much money you're making? No, not really. It's, it's not the same as the cash you're actually making. So this, you're not actually making 8.7 million of cash each year. Similarly, the expenses recorded in the P&L, they're not the same as the cash paid for those expenses if you're using the accruals basis. So if you paid, if uh, you've incurred 3.7 million, that's not the same as paying out 3.7 million necessarily. We need to understand how to adjust for these. Okay, so as I said, so the, the idea is to get to the operating cap profits in cash terms. OK, and the way we get to that will be from calculating the cash from sales and taking away cash payments for expenses. OK, so having everything in cash terms, basically. Um, but let's look at how we can do that. So we have to think what balance sheet items do relate to revenue and operating expenses. And I'm going to name a few, but I'm not going to give all of them. It depends on each company. So we have trade receivables because we're doing debit, trade receivable, credit sales, credit revenue. So this is unpaid revenue, isn't it? Trade payables is unpaid expenses. Prepayments is an adjustment you make to expenses. So it's where you pay early for an expense. Accruals are unpaid expenses, basically. Inventory is... Uh, uh, the movement in inventory is reflected in cost of sales and we spend money to acquire inventory now for assets the rule is to if we increase assets we have to reduce profit before tax to arrive at our cash figure 
So if we increase trade receivables by 5k, if that's increasing the year, you reduce by 5k. And that makes sense because if you have a higher trade receivable balance, that means there are more unpaid amounts. So your cash flows, cash inflows coming into the business are lower. Similarly, prepayments, if we increase by 7k, we reduce by 7k. And that also makes sense because when you're prepaying an expense, you're paying for it early. So there's more cash outflow from the business. Okay, this time, if I have inventory decreasing by 8k, what's going to happen? I'm going to have to increase by 8k. So it's the opposite pattern each time. Because if you think about it, if I'm decreasing inventory by 8k, um, I'm spending less money. There's more cash, less cash outflow from the business, so I have to increase profit before tax by 8k. We'll explain more about these patterns in a minute, but first I want to explain the balance sheet items you don't need to adjust. Okay, so any assets, long-term assets, liabilities and equity, we'll cover those. So loans payable you don't need to adjust for because those are dealt with under the financing activity section. Plant and machinery, that's to do the investing section of the cash flow. And we've already adjusted for depreciation and amortization, so we don't need to factor those in again. And anything to do with equity accounts, because, you know, dividend issues, issues of share capital, those are financing activities and those are dealt with under the finance, financing activity section of the cash flow. Now, I wanted to explore more about what's actually happening for uh, why you if you increase a current asset you have to reduce profit before tax by that given amount let's look at it mathematically and i've got an example from icaw so if i have trade receivables so i've it's increased from 840k to 948k so my brought forward goes on the debit side 840k what I'm going to do is I'm posting all the revenue to 8646k. Okay, just to see what happens. This is just a hypothetical thing. That gives me a total of 9486k. Okay, I'm going to put a carried forward now. So the carried forward always goes on the opposite side to where you expect it to go. And that has catching up to do because we want to get to a total of 9486k. How is it going to catch up? Well, our balancing figure is going to be the cash received from sales and the cash coming into the business is this much I use some maths to do that so to get from bought forward to carry forward what are we doing we're adding 108k to get from revenue to cash in what are we doing we're taking away 108k okay so our cash received in this case is lower than our recorded revenue so if our cash received is lower, that means we need to reduce our, that means our cash, our cash profit in cash terms is lower. So we need to reduce recorded profits by 4,521k because our cash from profits is lower than our accrued profits. So what do you do with liabilities? Well, we if we increase liabilities, we increase the profit before tax. And let's see. So if trade payables increase by 5k, you increase by 5k, that sort of makes sense because if you're increasing trade payables, it means you're not paying your suppliers as much. So there's less cash outflow from the business. So you have a higher cash profit. Accruals increase by 7k, increase by 7k as well. So there's more unpaid expenses and less cash outflow. Let's do another one. So this is a different type of uh, uh, liability called deferred income. You don't really need to know what it is for the time being. But all I'm saying is if we decrease by 8k, what's actually happening? We're going to decrease by 8k as well. So the sign, whether plus or minus, is always the same. Okay. Gone a bit ahead there. But basically, I'm going to show you the logic as to why when you increase uh, liability, you have to increase profit for tax. So I've got a, the same ICW example, and we have our brought forward is 896K, 
and I carried forward is one four one seven k. Okay, so remember, brought for, trade payables is credit balance, so we put the brought forward on eight on the credit side. Our carried forward goes on the debit side. Now I'm going to pick an expenses figure out out of the air. I'm going to pick one thousand k. So one thousand k has been booked to trade payables, and that's giving me a total. This account credit side of giving me a total of 1896k so the debit side has a lot of catching up to do because it needs to get to a total of 1896k is lower and how does it do that well it's for the balancing figure is going to be the cash out of the business as a result of expenses and in this case it's 479k so let's see what's actually happening in terms of a maths so to get from brought forward to carry forward, we're adding 521k. But to get from the expense to the actual cash being paid out of the business, we're taking away 529k. So actually we're, we're not spending paying as much cash as the expense recorded. So cash exp expenses in cash terms are lower than expenses in accrual terms. So it means that the profit in cash terms is higher than the profit in accruals terms because if you're spending less money you have less a net less uh, cash moving out the business so we have to increase pro accrued profits by 521k so just to summarize what we've done so we started off with profit before tax we have to add back any non cash flow items and then we have to adjust for movements in current assets and liabilities. And that gives us the cash generated from operations. I also want to point out as well, um, so once you have the cash generated from operations, we take away tax, we take away interest. And that gives us the net cash from uh, or used in operating activities. Okay, so these two, two items this time are actual cash flows and you have to work them out. So we've seen that the indirect method reconciles a profit before tax to operating cash flows. We had to adjust for non-cash flow items. And remember current assets, the adjustment to current assets, you, the sign is always opposite. So if it's plus, then you have to subtract. Um, for current liabilities, the sign is the same. Okay, and I've explained the reasoning for why these adjustments actually work. Thanks everybody. Cheers, bye.